I'm Luke Hemmings, Woodland Officer for the Forestry Commission. I'm here to talk to John Anderson and his son Tom about their experiences creating woodland on their family farm and estate here in beautiful Northumberland. Their most recent woodland creation scheme has seen them plant over 12,000 trees along the River Wandsbeck, creating a valuable wildlife corridor and preventing farm sediments and runoff from entering the watercourse. Let's go and hear what John himself has to say. Land ownership is all about stewardship and I've long been convinced <clears throat> of the need that one should farm in harmony with the nature. We are very keen to make sure that the farm doesn't cause any pollution um, and by running effectively ribbons of wood up alongside the rivers that is uh, acting as a barrier and soaking up any nutrients. It's also soaking up water as it comes off the fields before it gets into the river and it slows it down. We've got brown trout and of particular importance are the white clawed crayfish which are a protected species. We are now getting back um, otters. This particular wood that we've just recently planted, Thomas, my son, has, has sold the carbon credits on those. So that is helping to bring in some money. So really good for biodiversity, but equally at the end to have a crop that we can harvest either for biomass, we have two biomass heating systems here, or as commercial logs. Timber prices have come up enormously. With the farm expanding, I suppose, over the years, it's encouraged me, certainly in the last sort of 20 years or so, to really try and major much more on the woodlands. And we do need to build in a resilience to our farming operations. So I've tried to create a diversified business here. It's a sort of multifaceted approach. We dealt a lot with the forestry officer at the time, which was all very, very helpful. Hopefully we've come up with a scheme that ticks a lot of boxes. But even hedgerow trees or individual trees in fields, etc., they're all of value. And most importantly, they all give pleasure. One thing that staggered me is how quickly trees make an impact on a landscape. And the pleasure that it gives me is enormous. I think as to the future, you must speak to my son. But I've always been very fond of that Kenyan proverb. Remember, the land is not given to you by your ancestors. It is lent to you by your children. Let's be honest, most of the woodlands that we're planting now, I'm not really going to see to their maximum potential, um, but my children will. It's something that's for my children's benefit. Frankly, it's also for the, for the benefit of, of the nation in terms of the benefits that it, that it brings from a carbon point of view, environmental point of view, sustainability point of view. I not only see the immediacy value of it, but obviously also the, the biodiversity value, which is enormous. This is not a sort of quick buck and a quick game, you know, this is generational stuff. So as we've heard, trees and woodlands are often seen as a long-term investment that might only benefit future generations. And while that's true, it's becoming increasingly clear to me that with careful planning and execution, we can start to see some of those benefits almost straight away. And now with new sources of funding coming available through carbon and other public goods, maybe some of the questions that we might have asked in the past are not so black and white. If you'd like to find out more about grants that are on offer or just to book a visit with your local woodland officer, then visit gov.uk and search forestry.